Hey, welcome to the Out of Spec Podcast. We are back for another week of car talk. I've got with me Kyle, Mike, Ben, and of course I'm Jordan. We're going to talk about a new vehicle in the fleet among Mike and Ben and um, some EQS testing we've been doing. We've you know been hooting cars down a runway and uh, a little bit of news here and there. So let's jump right in. Uh, Mike, you dropped the bomb on me earlier that uh, there may be a new car in the fleet. Is that correct? Yes. So the past couple of weeks, Ben and I have uh, kind of won out and looked at a uh, an older new to us car that is actually imported uh, from Spain. And uh, I'll let Ben go ahead and really dive into the specifics of it. Uh, it was more or less his idea to buy this car. But I am also very <laughs> excited because it is another four by four. One could say the best four by four by far. So what do we buy then uh so with the gx recently we acquired which is sort of like the world's most reliable four by four you can buy i just felt like i needed something the complete opposite so it's a 1992 less yeah less reliable <laughs> uh, it's a 1992 range rover classic three-door uh it's a spanish import and it's a turbo diesel with a five-speed manual which is just the drivetrain to have uh it's fast as heck it's like 17.9 seconds here to 60. The faster than breaks. walking it's fast <laughs> it is faster than walking ish just <laughs> only just uh so it is it is super slow it is the loudest diesel i've ever heard like it sounds like a truck or a tractor but it's from a tiny little four-cylinder diesel it's, it's ridiculous how much noise it makes uh, and I, I just think nothing says reliability like a British car with an Italian built diesel engine. It just seems like a perfect match. So we'll, we'll be seeing how that goes. That'll be an interesting ownership experience, most likely. We haven't taken delivery of the car yet. It's actually a colleague of mine who actually bought it and then like a year ago and now he is buying a house. So he's trying to downsize his fleet. And I told him, hey, I would totally be interested in this car if you ever choose to sell it. So he um, bought it on Bring a Trailer, right? Uh, cars and Bids, actually. Oh, Cars and Bids. Better, yeah. I think. I think I just sent Jordan a link. I actually found the uh, the, listing. the original mm -hmm. article. Yeah, the listing from when he had bought it. So oh, there it is. It looks so good. That is amazing. Cloth seats. It's my dream. Why are you <laughs> not buying this? I've been looking for one. <laughs> Why should we not buy it? Well, the I would have bought it. Range Rover. I can see literally nothing wrong with this idea so far. Well, <laughs> I can see a lot wrong with it, but no. Uh, Does it come with a dog? No. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> not. I did ask. It is a very good dog car, though. My uh, coworker does have a dog, and his dog loves riding in the back of it. I like that. Apparently, won't ride in any car. other car either. The car is in a different spot for each photo. Yes. Oh, was that John Deere for sale too? That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think these photos were taken in uh, Tennessee, Nashville is where this car yeah. came out of. Uh, it has completed, I think, a 600 mile road trip at one point uh, recently, and it did 33.5 miles per gallon during that trip, which is pretty wow. good. That's so wow. cool. Uh, this will actually somehow be the most fuel efficient vehicle I've ever owned. Uh, the 911 previously was the most fuel efficient because it could do 30 on the highway, but this does 33. Well, so, allegedly, uh, you have to properly test that. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll try it out a little Bring bit. Bring it we'll on out. Yeah. Fuel <laughs> test there. But, New road tripper. Yeah. yeah. Wow, it looks like this dude had a whole bunch of cars. 944s in the back with racing. Yeah, he's racing good stuff. Uh, I think if you get to one of the next photos, you'll see a couple other off roaders, like an old G Wagon, oh, and a Citroen two CV van. Volvo, um, a man of taste stuff. owned this a vehicle. Defender. Yes. I love uh, it this. has uh, a heater for sure. Um, it had AC, which was disabled at some point because it's the old AC system. So maybe we'll convert that to the new stuff and nah, enjoy air conditioning. Just leave it. But, Depends on how hot it gets. So just we'll don't see. drive it when it's hot. WD forty. <laughs> well, we're in the south. Forty miles so an hour. It's, it's kind of. It's hot. not a daily driver. <laughs> but it's got everything you need. It's got the low range. This is a unique uh, era for the Range Rover products because they didn't have a manually locking diff. Instead, it has a viscous center diff, which essentially automatically engages. Does it? Uh, is it reliable? It seems to be. It seems that from my research, when that differential system fails, it fails in the on position and destroys the rear end and blows up the rear diff of the casing. <laughs> so this still has a rear diff attached to the car, so it's probably not failed yet. 
Uh, yeah, the we, we did actually, go down and drive it. Everyone seems to say it's as good as the manually locking center differential. So we will be doing some off-road testing. Maybe we'll do a comparison with the GX. Uh, no cruise control. So don't want to take it too far realistically. Wait, just, <laughs> it's cruise control is going to be wide open throttle then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, every, every, after driving it, I'm pretty sure everywhere is going to be wide open throttle in this car. because it is. And it's a turbo slow. diesel, right? It's a turbo yep. diesel. Yeah, it's made by, um, cannot say it for the life of me, but VM, it's some Italian company who makes it's the engine for the article here. So it's an Italian diesel engine, but it was new with this engine. Yep. Yes, yes. It's the, the original motor. When Land Rover offered diesels on the Range Rover, that was who they went to. They, they uh, sublet that engine design out to someone. Uh, well, and I some people say it's great it. and some people say it's not, but it was leaking oil. So I know it has oil in it, had a fresh oil change. So that's good. You don't really have to check the drain the oil, you just top it off, I'm guessing. Just it'll work its way out eventually. <laughs> it really is gorgeous. Uh, congratulations. I can't wait to drive it. And mm -hmm. uh, we'll talk maybe about some classic Land Rover stuff because I'm going to go drive some classic Land Rovers pretty soon as well. Uh, maybe a project that would be great for this vehicle. We'll get into it. But, mm -hmm. but I guess I have a yes. couple more questions. So like, okay, how did you end up buying my dream car? And then how do I also get one for what you paid for this? <laughs> uh... There's plenty of crappy ones out there for, for not, not a lot of money. One. It's a pretty good one. It's got a tiny bit of rust. Well, not tiny, but it's got some rust. Uh, but it's on Honestly, stuff that's easily replaceable, like the um, door sill, lower sill is something that is really common. And you can literally buy the pre-cut metal for like 100 bucks and just cut and just, and it back in. And then I get something to paint it and it's all good. But it's not structural, so we'll probably leave it and just enjoy driving it and not worry about it. That's the point of an old Range Rover is just yeah. drive it like a farm truck. But mm -hmm. uh, lately, Kyle, on Bring a Trailer, I've noticed there have been a, quite a few uh, four-door classics coming oh. up, mm -hmm. uh, like Vogue's. Uh, ben actually made a Bring I a Trailer account one. to bid on one before <laughs> we officially bought this one. Well, uh, it I ended up not I had selling. officially bought the red car, but there's a really nice blue one. And I thought, wouldn't it be good to have <laughs> two of them for a moment? And it didn't sell. It didn't re meet reserve things. That was just a me. regular V8 car. Yeah, but and it was an auto, which basically all of the Range Rovers are V8 auto. And if you go old enough, you can get a V8 manual. And if you go even older or kind of weirder, you can get that five-speed turbo diesel like the, the one we've got there. Uh, but it's a 92, <laughs> it is a 92 and it's virtually identical to if you go back to 80 or earlier. Really, to the first, it's basically the first model, you know. Well, uh, it's sweet. And so I guess on the topic of Range Rovers, not to derail the show too much, Jordan, but I'm going to go down to ECD in Orlando and at the end of this month-ish. Um, so I'm going to drive the Rivian, the Hummer EV, and then mm -hmm. the electric Defender, which is not really nice. a production model, but right in a row, <laughs> like within days of each other. The Defender is what um, we all want, though. <laughs> The Defender is going to be, it's the most expensive. I think it's 300 grand. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. Oregon. And it has a 100 kilowatt hour Model S battery pack in it. Wow. Um, Amazing. And it's the motor like retains the four wheel drive system. And so like, I think that's perfect, but give me like a 40 kilowatt hour system. I don't really want to go anywhere outside of town. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, like I just need to get it two miles to work and back. I just want a daily driver. Yeah, it needs to get on the highway, but I don't want to convince myself that I would want to drive this car on the highway for long distances because it's not terribly safe in a modern context. The farthest the car that could run into you. I would ever bring it to is six miles from my house. And that's <laughs> probably the farthest I would ever drive it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd probably take ours to the, the off-road trails in Uari. So that's, I don't know. 70 miles away. That'll be the furthest it goes. Probably. Defenders aren't great at like rock crawling no. stuff though. Uh, the Range Rover should be all right though. Yeah. You know, the Range Rover. Was <laughs> the yeah. Range Rover. Uh, I just so, want to do it to do it. I'm not going to buy a Range Rover and not take it off. Oh, well for your diesel one. Yeah, of course. I'm just saying for an electric Defender, I wouldn't take it out there. Um, oh, I might just because why not? That's even more fun. <laughs> even, it was great in the Lexus because we'd come up over these big rocky hills to these overlooks where everyone was parked and they'd be like, you drove that? I'm like, yeah, that's how I got here. I don't know how, how I helicoptered it in. There's no other solution other than to get it here. And well, like, it's kind I, of funny. You know, I'm all about pushing cars. So, so I probably would do some stupid stuff with it. But I think, yeah, pretty exciting to see uh, your new Range Rover. I know mm -hmm. our audience probably won't care and they think you're killing the planet, but I'm very excited about it's, it. Its carbon footprint has already been decided when it was produced. So I'm just simply driving it. 
and and Ben actually is doing everyone a favor because it's, it's it's his additional car beyond his yes. Taycan, which is electric. So yeah, if this is ben, my daily driver, by I would buying a Taycan, it's like the fifth car, right? It is <laughs> yeah, the fifth true. car, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so what's the garage? You have the GX, the Mini, the Taycan, the Range Rover, and and a Boxster. A Boxster. Uh, yeah, the Boxster. That replaced the 911 a little while back. I still want to drive that Boxster. Oh. It's great, honestly. It's really because it's got twenty thousand. It is really good. It's, it's such a little peach of a car, and it's really fun. I have a little more fun in that than I did in the nine eleven. I know nine eleven is more serious, but uh, everyone kind of sleeps on the box during the Cayman. They're super fun to throw around, and they're like big fast Miatas. Not big, I know I just left Miatas. your place a couple months ago, but I need to come back now because the garage <laughs> just keeps getting more interesting. I was going to say, well, you better yeah. make it soon because one of these cars is going to have to sell, yeah. and <laughs> it could be the Boxster. Or the GX, or mm -hmm. who knows? Maybe none of them sell. I don't no. know. But we theoretically, we should the sell GX one. recently, but now it rides really stiff. So I feel like I don't want it anymore because <laughs> I ruined it. Yep. Yeah, Timon's car rides like crap. Yeah. Also, <laughs> well, theoretically, we can return ours to a soft ride. It just might need an alignment and something else. So we'll do a little more work on that car. And if it returns to its plush ride with a lift, then it'll be staying around because we're going to need a support vehicle for this range over here. <laughs> <laughs> I already know. I'm already looking. I already priced out a hitch to put on the Lexus. That way we could tow the range over when it's broken. Well, speaking of trailers, likely. I've been specking out some car haulers uh, to Ooh. have because I want to use a, a standardized trailer for our towing tests because we have the Rivian coming next week and all this stuff. And I don't think I'll be able to get a trailer in time for the Rivian, but we can always do that. Probably later. not. Anyway, a, a trailer to run oh. all the trucks through is something I want to do. And if we're going to have a trailer, I want it to be a car hauler. And then it's like, okay, it needs to be aluminum. And then I'm like, oh, I want the cool door that opens up so I can open the car door when I pull it in. And it just goes. And then it's like, oh, 20 feet? Well, I may as well do 24 feet and have some cabinets up front. Mm. <laughs> Solar panels on the way. Hear me out on this. What if you just rent a U-Haul 6 by 10 trailer? That's pretty standardized. Uh, no, it's not because the wheel bearings and tires are all different on each. Uh, and so I, bad. yeah, I thought about that, but then we've been actually renting a lot of U-Haul trailers recently, not for testing, but just for stuff. And they all tow a little differently. That's true. They're all in various states of having been ripped <laughs> I was on. Say. Pretty much. I'd rather just have one trailer that after everyone, we can re-grease the bearings, get it back to brand new and make sure the tires are set at the right pressure. And that way, when we do Rivian versus Hummer EV versus F-150 Lightning towing tests, the constant trailer is the same. <laughs> make it as fair as possible. Yeah. TFL truck. Well, gosh, it does feel like we're copying them a little bit with this, but we're not going to do any uphill towing tests. I I love their stuff. I am a fan of the Ike Gauntlet test. We've been a fans mm -hmm. of that for 10 oh, yeah. years now, however long they've been doing it. Um, but I think we do need to do some efficiency testing with, with trailers and not. It will come off like we're copying them, but that's not the intention. But I mean, people, multiple people have to do the same test. I mean, it's not like... Oh, we're not every... going to run it on the same stretch of road. Yeah. I mean, that's just kind of... We'll let... I don't want to... We need... Yeah. We need diverse results because there's not going to be two people buying a truck. You know, people want diversity in what they're looking mm -hmm. at. They don't want to see the same test run the same stretch of road. If everyone used our efficiency loop for the highway of testing, people would be like, wow, that's not very accurate. Or if everyone used here. the same drag strip we use. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which triggered. They, um, I, whatever. It, it is what it is. We worked so hard to convince the school to use this drag strip. And then TFL is like, oh, we want to do that too. And so now they're there. But this is all part of the, you know, fun of working in the same area. We used to all hang out together, have, you know, do some. Oh, we all get along. The, We're all friends. We just all want strip. our little competitive advantages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we have been using the drag strip a bit recently. We did uh let's see, there's a model three video on have we even talked about the drag strip on this podcast? Uh loosely, but not since we had our first day on the drag strip the day after the last one came out. So do you want to explain what this is, the school, yes. or the the how we had to get it, all this stuff? Yes. So it is a Crispin Airfield. Is that like an old decommissioned base of some sort? Is that what it is? Uh so or... that's what I originally had thought, but it's not actually. It was the Fort Collins, like local municipal airport. Oh, nice. Uh, and then 
it basically went out of service, went run down. The school bought it actually, or were given it. I don't know if it was just free or not. And um, then they kind of hadn't done anything with it. They do a couple testing projects out there for like drone flying. They test some of the school university's cars out there. Um, but the pavement was in such disrepair. There were huge potholes everywhere when we got to it. And so we're like, hey, we want to use your airfield. What do we need to pay to help get it back into working order? So we came up in agreement with the school to, you know, put in some money. We are sweeping the runway. You know, we're, we're doing a lot on our side to make it um, sort of come back to usable uh, condition. And now we're able to use it. Uh, you know, we have to pay for it, but we're able to use it for, uh, drag races and testing and acceleration breaking stuff. And uh, it's really beautiful with mountains in the background. It's still a rough surface, but it's way better than anything else we could find. And it's literally a three mile drive door to door from our office. Yeah. It's great location. Stunning. I think that's super cool. Pavement quality mm -hmm. doesn't matter too much. As long as it looks good on camera, I'd like. I'd rather have a, a beautiful scenic place than like a really nicely paved runway that's surrounded mm -hmm. by crappy buildings or something. Um, and yeah, there's a lot we can do on this, and we've done a lot so far, relatively speaking. I mean, we had Model Three versus Model Three, basically Kyle's um, with hundred thousand miles versus one that was much less miles, like thirty thousand, um, just to see you know whether or not the power delivery is less when you have much higher mileage which we've kind of determined not really unless you do consecutive over and over runs and then it's like ever so slightly different but it's so close like it was i think closer than we expected right like it, i just it was... expected the lower mileage part to walk mine also like i was a little bit of a heavier person i mean we're just nipping you know at, at little things here but like neck and neck on the first run and then just a little bit slower in the uh the higher use vehicle but mm -hmm. like don't trade your car. I mean, so the, the big difference is like if you're doing Nürburgring laps over and over and you need longevity or you're going to track days, that's reason enough, I would say, to get a brand new one that won't heat up as much because you have less resistance in the pack. And so that's what we were finding was on the initial cold run, cars were great, but mine definitely thermal throttled a little bit quicker. But we're talking such minor, minor, minor details, not even a full car length after well over a quarter mile. Wow. That's actually pretty, I wasn't sure about the result of that either. I, in my head, assumed just like you would, that your car would have been quite significantly uh, behind just given the mileage and how many times it's been supercharged and all that. Yeah, it's had a rough life and it seems to be holding up really well. And so to me, it proves that 100,000 miles is really nothing for an EV, um, which we've known. Yeah. But now we actually have conclusive data on it, at least on one particular vehicle. And there's a lot more wow. data coming. I mean, we're doing more videos on the 100,000 mile Tesla Model 3 series, um, which a couple have been released. Kyle's been testing kind of the range and the battery degradation. And, you know, this part, the drag race was part of it. And uh, it's it's a fun, I mean, this is a fun place to do tests. The, on the photo here for, the, for our people listening, there's six very strange vehicles to see together. Kyle's giant Winnebago Revel, Miata, four EVs, including a smart car, Tesla, Tesla, <laughs> Mercedes EQS, um, and all very grayscale, which I just realized uh, it's kind of boring. But yeah, the EQS is something we've had for the past week, and it feels like we've done so much with it. Um, I think <laughs> I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how I feel about it, other than I think Mike would love it. Can you explain yes. which EQS we had, where it falls yeah. in the lineup? I don't know if a lot of our audience knows even what EQS is. Well, yeah, it's one of the few cars that I've never seen in the wild, even though we've tested it multiple times now. Yep. But well, five this... times, five separate occasions I've driven this car. <laughs> this is the 450 plus. So EQS is Mercedes um, kind of flagship, at least currently, electric sedan. And it's supposedly sort of, I mean, they'd never officially said this is the electric S class, but it supposedly falls in line with that style, that type of luxury, even the price range. Um, and it's just, you know, an electrified Mercedes sedan, except somehow uglier than the S class, much uglier. And, but very well, comfortable. I will say the new S class doesn't look good from the back. Mm, yeah. yeah. No, the last gen looked better. 
yeah, if you had the last gen taillights with the current gen front end, that to me is would be peak S class. Yeah. But this has been a fun car to ride around. Like it's I'm tr- I'm trying to figure out how I feel about it because it is really nice to ride in other than the brake pedal feel, but this is the 450 plus. So this is the rear wheel drive and which actually in some cases might be the one to get. It's slower than the all wheel drive, the two motor one, but if you're buying this, I don't think you should be caring about speed because there's many other things faster for less money. Um, this just has really nice quality interior. I mean, Kyle and I were driving around everywhere with our hot stone massage and listening to music on the great Burmeister 4D sound system <laughs> and uh, had ambient lighting Wait, everywhere. This one did not have the 4D. Oh, not 4D, just Burmeister. Yeah. yeah. The Mercedes the S class we had earlier was better sound yeah that had the 4d with the the speakers in the seats yeah this is still a great sound system and had the hyper screen which i consider more gimmicky than useful although it was kind of fun you know you can whoever's in the passenger seat as the driver you can say excuse me sir would you please enable my hot stone massage and the pastor can just reach up on their screen and do it (laughs) for you like it feels like you have a permanent butler but only if you have a passenger which i feel like a lot of people don't necessarily um but it's it's just a comfortable quiet car and by not having a front motor it is technically a little quieter there's no motor noise in front of you so this really is a great spec i would actually go without the hyper screen personally i really like the standard eight thousand dollars for no (laughs) further functionality (laughs) i was thinking the same thing jordan because every time i build one one, I never select the hyper screen because I can't freaking find it. Like it's I never not there as an option. Oh, is it buried in? I've never well, have find you been building five eighties? No. Oh, because it's was, standard on five eighty and up. No, yeah. Say, no, I how went five eighty was standard, but I only build the rear wheel drive because that's all that you know you need. You reality. say every time. How many times have you built an EQS? I don't know, four or five <laughs> times. <laughs> There's not so, a whole lot of colors to choose from. It's basically silver, white, and blue, and that's it. Blue mm. with the white interior, blue with parchment interior. That's the way to go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I Mine always ended up blue. I drove the EQS without hyper screen, and as a driver, it's not a non-issue. But as a passenger, there's such a flat plastic area on the <laughs> dash without it. It's Ooh, it kind of jarring. As the yeah, you have to get the wood trim. You but do. I this agree. had like so this that was... gray plastic little... MB Mercedes, oh, yeah, it's a standard on it, and it was yeah. kind of eh. Yeah, if it was wood, I think it'd look really nice. That's like the it can look like a yacht floor. In that's some that's like yeah. the arrow wheels. The arrow wheels are just flat pieces of plastic with a million Mercedes logos on them. <laughs> Same <laughs> coating. Yeah, we we um, you know, it wasn't really our fault, but we ran over a pothole on what was already a weak tire, and so the we kind of blew a tire and. uh Thankfully, it's, it was two miles from where we were dropping it off to swap cars. Yeah. Uh, and I just drove it on the flat tire because I called them. They're like, ah, just drive it. We got an extra wheel and tire. We don't care. I'm like, okay. So I'm like driving it with opposite lock down the street and ESPs grabbing brakes the whole time. Uh, yeah. yeah, not not pretty. But, but go ahead, Jordan. Well, thankfully, they had a spare wheel. And then we, when we dropped it off, we got to see the, the arrow wheels, you know, which were on this car the first time Kyle tested it. And uh, yeah, they're they're not lookers i but really both wheels are hard to use i mean the these wheels here that you the the bigger wheels whatever they're called so many little spindles even just to get the valve stem cap off i had to like squeeze my fingers in there and just work it like a quarter turn every time it was so annoying and then the arrow wheels you have to pick up from the inner um like hub section there's no place to pick them up anywhere else (laughs) <laughs> right, they're fully enclosed. But what's interesting, and we hadn't mentioned this, and I, I don't think I mentioned it in any of the reviews, this is the exact car I drove when I drove EQS for the first time. And it was on oh, the really? arrow wheels. And it's actually that car that's on the right-hand side being compared to a Honda Civic. Someone stole my photo, and then it went viral. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so don't cl- don't give them the clicks. But um, it's this is that exact car that went viral for being so ugly. Kyle sat in this car and he said, hello, old friend. (laughs) Well, it was just so nice. I was like, I got in it. I'm like, wait, this is like the same spec. And every car was like a little bit different. And I'm like, but the wheels. And then I looked at the window sticker and realized this car was delivered on the 20 inch arrow wheels. And they put 21 inch winters on it. 
I'm like, why would you go nice. up in size for <laughs> snow? <winter. but laughs> Look, you gotta sometimes you just gotta ball out with the wheels. Go well, it them. was very interesting. So I've done some testing this week with this car, which we should probably discuss. I mean, just in terms of range, we do a yeah. 70 mile per hour highway range test, did 345 miles on a single charge at 70. That is the longest range I've ever tested. Um, now I'm not saying there aren't any longer range vehicles out there, but I don't know who would need any more. Um, so, so really good in the range department and we did charging testing. It sits at 200 kilowatts, basically all the way up from zero to 35% or so. And, um, finding a charger that can deliver 200 kilowatts was the big <laughs> pain in the ass. It took me two days to figure yeah, out because 350 kilowatt EA not using the, uh, what's the name for those chargers? It's the amperage. That's the issue, right? So you can't lump EA into one category. EA has both 500 amp and 350 amp chargers, both rated at 350 kilowatts. And so the answer is at, if you have a 350 amp charger and you're at a thousand volts, assuming it can do 350 amps at a thousand volts, that's 350 kilowatt. It's not false branding, um, but some of these chargers are ramped down because they have some issues internally or they're trying to prolong their life or something like this. So you have to go to either a brand new Signet charger that's had a recent software update within the last few months or a BTC Canada charger, which if we watch the straight pipes video, none of them seem to work. So <laughs> um, yeah, I was going to say, yeah. So basically, you know, at least in my area, I was just out. Uh, there was no, no new signet 350 kilowatt chargers that I could go to. So EV go actually had a brand new 350 kilowatt installation that was 500 amps. And that's what we needed. And, um, so we went down there to Denver, which happens to be right where they keep the media vehicles. So we just said, hey, rather than bringing one up to the house, we'll swap it down at your office. And uh, that's where we got the pothole, literally pulling into this charger. Uh, and it wasn't, I was going three miles an hour and I just like went in the dip and her, so that tire also had like a slow leak all week. So it may have just been the end of it, but I don't know. Anyway. Uh, yeah, then, then we, we finally had the battery warm, plugged it in at 0%, charged it to full, and then returned it, and it worked out really well. Great EVgo experience. I will say the annoying thing we ran into, because this car is such a big battery, is that EVgo stops your charging session at one hour. Um, yes. Not sure why. I mean, I guess mo very few people would be charging for longer than yeah. an hour, <laughs> but there are some cars, and probably more to come soon, that would be could re realistically be sitting there for an hour. So that's something I wonder if they'll change. Um, it was really nice to do a charging test with EVgo because unlike with Tri America, they don't have this screensaver come up every 60 seconds. Mm -hmm. Although, ironically, the Mercedes did. <laughs> yeah, so we it, were it, still <laughs> at the same issue on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we had to keep opening and closing the Mercedes door, but the EVgo station was fine. Um, so it's just different. And it was, I love EVgo's new software because they show you amps, volts, and then they do the kilowatt conversion. Then they show you how many kilowatt hours are added and how much it costs. And, and they, they show you, you the math. They give you all of it and they even teach you on the screen. Here's what a kilowatt is. Here's why we're charging oh, at this wow. voltage. And here's what the amps mean. And if you multiply them, then you get kilowatts. And it was like, finally, someone gets this stuff. And I like that it was kind of behind the little extra info button, which I didn't hit until the end because I haven't used EVgo in forever because they're only 50 kilowatts by me. I may as well just plug it into yeah. a wall socket uh, in my mind. So, <laughs> you know, I can this, tell Ben already <laughs> wants to see experience this EVgo station. It was amazing. And so apparently in Charlotte, they have the new version like this. And I was using a, a little charge card, but if I had used my EVgo app, they even give you a printout of your charging curve at the end of the session. Oh, that's cool. That's cool, actually. Yes. I really like that. Oh, Ben wants to go now. How many, <laughs> uh, what's the pack, nominal pack voltage on the EQS? It's not high. High. It's like five something? No, it's like 430. Like, oh, so that's that's why this Amper's limitation was such a big deal on a car that's that can why, charge yeah. this. Fast. So I'm the cars Tesla, were, this is, kind of this the first is gonna matter. Is Rivian? Yeah, I was gonna say too. Rivian, EQS, i4, iX, and Hummer mm -hmm. EV and Silverado EV. Because even though they're 800 volt vehicles, if you pull up to a 350 amp charger, that's only 240 kilowatts, not 350. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. But it, it more pack voltage than anything else. Yep. Yeah. Maybe for, it's 270 the... kilowatts. I don't know. This is why it, 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 this mm -hmm. limitation has become, it's the first vehicle I've run into other than Tycons at very low state of charge where this 350 amp limitation is an issue. And it hasn't been because cars haven't needed this much power. It's the first time I've ever charged at 500 amps, which is what heats everything up. That's what's doing mm -hmm. all the work. So it was the hardest yeah. I've ever stressed the charging station personally. And it was mm -hmm. really interesting. I had my temperature gun out. I was looking at everything. Everything stayed nice and reasonably cool. Um, mm -hmm. Nothing over a hundred degrees Fahrenheit. It was like 28 degrees Fahrenheit when we did this test and um, got a pretty good test out of it. I was impressed with the charging yeah. curve. What, the problem here is with i4, iX, EQS, and Rivian, you're let down by the charging networks not being able to deliver maximum power to the vehicle. And some people are like, who cares? At least you're charging, you're plugged in. And from my eyes, it's like, this is such a, a minor thing. The chargers are there. We mm -hmm. got to make this stuff work well. And mm -hmm. people want the fastest charging. And the difference between 150 and 200 kilowatt charging makes a big difference on these packs that are bigger than 100 kilowatt hours yeah it's still serviceable admittedly but it is an area for improvement you know it's funny two years ago we were saying that pretty much all the 350 kilowatt ea stations were like oh that's pretty overkill that'll be well set up for the future and then here we come with some cars that are these high power charging you know really high speed charging but they're not that high voltage that enables that to happen easier um, I'm actually surprised how many cars are coming to market that are not a, you know, 800 volt doesn't have to be the number, but a, a higher voltage, you know, from the pack overall. Yeah, but you usually can buy like sub components at that are rated for 600 volts or a thousand volts and you need to be like 20% mm -hmm. below it. So you're really going to find a 400 volt and an 800 volt class of car, unless yeah, you're like you Lucid where you engineer everything in house and you're like 920 volts, you know, on the top <laughs> end. Um, and so some of these chargers only go up to 950 volts or 930 volts. So if you have a really high voltage car, they'll still need onboard boosters to take the energy up. And, you know, I was talking to um, uh, Brandon Flash, who I don't know has been on this podcast, but he's, he's a friend of mine who's into EV is an, and he said Bjorn Nyland, who does a lot of EV testing, did a test in Norway and it made so much sense to me. And I don't, I haven't verified any of this by the way, but this is interesting. You know, when you plug in a Tycon at a 400 volt charger maximum, like mm -hmm. a supercharger in Europe, yeah. uh, it basically says, okay, it splits the Tycon voltage in half is how that system works. The way the EV6 and Ionic 5 work is it basically tells the charger, I'm a 480 volt car. It maxes out whatever the charger can do to get even more juice in. And then it steps up the rest of the voltage. And so I, that's way smarter than the way Porsche does it. Yeah, it seems right, like, uh, well, they're using their motor inverter at Hyundai, aren't they, for this? Yeah, so it's Which totally is smart because you have a lot more control over that. Yeah. Um, you know, very well integrated. Whereas I think uh, as much as Porsche probably doesn't like to hear this, that I, their motor is the motor itself or some of those components are not coming from in-house. So no, yeah, they're all you know, out, they don't have that control for it. Yep, but they should. And um, it just shows the EGMP prowess, if you will, even more mm -hmm. by being able to say, oh, I'm plugged into a 480 volt cap charger. I'm just going to tell it I'm whatever it's maxed out at. <laughs> and then give me all the yeah. amps you can. Yeah, if it's a little extra work. Now, I would also like to see EGMPs kind of cooling during charging altered as well. You know, that it feels like they left a little to be desired in that. You know, it's still great charging curve. It's and still get early it days. Anywhere, but still early you know, hopefully days. that improves. I think I think that car is going to be a monster with some software updates. So okay. anyway, EQS back to this great car uh, doesn't the more time I spend with it, the less I fall in love with it. I think it from a driving perspective is very far off from like a combustion S class. The back seats suck by the way, really do you sit so upright in that thing. I am more comfortable in the back of an ID four in the back of an Ionic five than I am in the back of the EQS. And, um, and the brake pedal is inexcusably bad. It, it, it feels like you've boiled the brake fluid at six track days and your pedal just goes <laughs> to the floor before it does anything. And sometimes it feels like it, it doesn't have enough pressure in the braking system than it oh, sometimes does. And so like when you initially tip into the brake pedal, it's pumping ABS to like spike pressure and it just is so misremembered. Can you really set it up as one pedal drive? I only drove one for like 
yes a mile or two i didn't really fiddle with any of that good one pedal driving it's smooth but it pulls the brake pedal away from you every time oh no because it's a physically connected brake pedal after you get through the regen so when you go into strong regen every time you lift off the pedals like into the carpet and then you gotta like find it you're like where is this thing and sometimes it's it's higher than you would expect so you're like and other times you like hit it and nothing happened and you go to the floor very That's strange. extremely strange. I so don't like, know yeah. how they let this brake pedal leave the factory. It is the worst part of the car. <laughs> and I wonder what the the engineering like decision making was there as to why they did it that way. Because like most EVs, when you crank up regen, that brake pedal stays where it is, no matter what the setup is generally. Yep. And that's a really weird experience to see. Yeah, and it does it in the, the all-wheel drive cars and the rear-wheel drive car. And uh, I spoke to the guys at AMG about it because I drove the 53 version of this car. And I was with the lead engineer, and I was giving him all this crap for the brake pedal. And mm -hmm. and he said, like, we upgraded the brake booster. We tried to do everything we could in the AMG, and it sucked the same. <laughs> 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 and i had the optional like nine thousand dollar carbon ceramics on that car which i was like maybe it sucks because they're cold and then i got them really freaking hot and it sucked worse and i'm like this car mm -hmm. just does not like to slow down wow great road that tripper though great. so from a suspension <laughs> perspective it's almost too soft where it bottoms out on big bumps and stuff which is kind of funny <laughs> um, and, and it's like but in parking lots the rear steer 10 degrees is magical the comfort of the car the quietness doing 350 miles on one charge i could have done five times that amount i would love to own one to just do long distance in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah road trips yes it's great yeah. at that but then you're like oh it only does 200 kilowatt charging so it's it has its place. The car is a very odd vehicle, but uh, very good for the person who it's intended for. Yeah, very niche buyer, but that niche buyer will be so happy. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. It, it makes me excited to see what future offerings Mercedes brings. I'm excited to drive like EQB and like all those other, mm. well, the I've other things. EQA and it feels very tinny. Oh, really? Yeah, it's, okay. it's almost like too sharp of a throttle. And then yeah. like the EQS is way long of everything. And definitely that platform you can tell is very different than EQA, which yeah. is EQB. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'm excited to experience more of those. But I do want to um, shift to some news really quick because, you know, as of today when we're recording this or yesterday when you're listening to it, the ID Buzz, I guess the first looked unveiling came out, although it's not the american one uh even though they hyped it up beyond belief uh, but i did want to get your guys' thoughts on this versus the concept and also um what you think how you think it's going to go as far as release and everything i mean we're like what two years out so it's funny they're they're yeah. like this is the future now except if you're an american buyer it's still in the future <laughs> you have two more years to go <laughs> i see um... american regulations yeah. I feel like I've been seeing teasers for the VW bus electric, whatever. It's had a 15 different names, I think, over the years for so long that I there's nothing that I have to think about it anymore. I've had all the thoughts, <laughs> you know. I don't know when the first tease of this was, but I feel like they first teased something like this in, God, like 2015 or 2010, maybe. It feels like forever ago. Yeah. So it's still going to be. That doesn't tell us what you think about this one, Ben. <laughs> That's the problem. I've had all the thoughts about the ID bus. For... So what are they? Share them. Oh, they all passed. Oh. <laughs> That's what I mean. Uh, it looks like it. It just, it. What? It just, yeah. it, it just looks pass. like exactly what I thought it was going to look like. And it's got an ID4 interior, which is the newish thing. And the only kind of thought I have is I like that the driver's assistance camera is at the bottom of the windshield because it's unique looking. That's about it. I have no other thoughts on it. Like is, it, is, it, I've just I've been living with it as an existing thing in my head for ten years now. Well, <laughs> unlike Ben, I do not recall this being around that long. I think like Diesel V was when they first, you know, kind of launched into this that I can remember. But anyway, I read about this today and I love it. I think it looks fan freaking tastic. About time someone actually made a proper electric van. I mean, just look like. Uh, EVs have been asking for an electric van people hauler forever. It's got a flat floor, for Christ's sake. Come on. It looks awesome. Uh, I think uh, they really knocked it out of the park with this thing. I think they're going to sell 
a million of these things, even if they are like 60 ish grand, like for a max one or something like that, I still think it's good value. And the range will probably be similar, if not a little bit better than an ID four. Um, by the time it comes out here, if, and hopefully the charging is even faster for the road trips that this van should be going on. And just think about how like modular this thing could be. Like there could be a camper version, which there definitely should be. Somebody needs yeah. to make that. Um, but I think it looks great. I'm super excited for it. So in the U S we're only going to be getting the long wheelbase, which has the room to support a roughly 110 kilowatt hour battery pack. And so with that big battery pack, I think that's where we'll see range similar to the current ID four. Yeah. Um, and it's, cause it's obviously going to be less efficient than, than ID four, but I am just so freaking pumped about this thing. Uh, it looks amazing. And like it's everything I've wanted from a bus. It's so easy. The formula was there. They could have done this three years ago. It feels ago. like it took a while for this to Who come around. An ID like, as an idea. Just, like, should have gone right to this. But I, think, I think in the US it's going to be expensive. I think yeah. they're going to bring a – at least I don't know. I don't know for sure. But I think they should – make it premium, make it a halo vehicle, put a hundred thousand dollar price tag on it. I don't care. They'll sell every single one they can make. Yeah, I, 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 I think car. I think they could undercut R1S and Model X, but it's not make it nearly as cheap as ID4, obviously. But I, I would be really curious to see how it does like on a on our 70 mile an hour loop because it, I think a lot of families view this as time to finally replace the 2001 odyssey yeah, and this be. is the perfect thing to replace it with i you know as a prior 2001 odyssey oh, well my parents owned it and that was the first <laughs> car i drove by the way i was um, gonna say it's very specific <laughs> car to a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um this thing is awesome and i'm really excited to see the american version and all the the kit that people are going to make for it like mike said modular lots of things you can do uh, the design is better than I expected. Go, like the concept looked amazing. And usually but Jordan, I showed you this earlier this week, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we've, the, we've seen this thing and it was so hard not to tell anyone. Yeah. The concept <laughs> I thought looked amazing. And usually the final production version comes out and then I'm just sorely disappointed, but this mm -hmm. one actually holds a candle, you know, still not as good as a the concept. There's the mm -hmm. weird thing when you're looking down on the hood in front of the glass windshield, it's just, kind of funky um but otherwise really really like this um uh, especially those like three lines behind the third window on the side i don't know there i mean there's surely no function they're just style and i think it's perfect can you pull it up because we can't quite see that i mean oh. this <laughs> i think this whole <laughs> id bus this... thing is about style though i mean you're not yeah, buying this to say oh i'm just gonna go buy another minivan or crossover i'm buying this because i'm stylish and i remember my grandparents telling me about the volkswagen bus they had when they were hippies mm -hmm. back in the 60s <laughs> like that is why i'm buying this car yep it's wonderful on every category it doesn't need to charge fast it doesn't need a nope. lot of range they'll sell every single one of them and guess what this car is not about let me get across the country in the fastest amount of time. To some people, it might be. This is an emotional vehicle that is just good vibes, great times. It's going to be super, really cool. You're going to pull up in a parking lot. You're never going to be having a bad day driving this thing. It's mm -hmm. just so awesome. Now, in Europe, they're taking a little bit of a different approach where they're going to have the cargo version. Um, oh, I was going to say, I want that. Yeah, so <laughs> that is basically the same thing, but just with the seats out of it. So, like, we can do that. You just rip mm -hmm. the seats out and they just bolt out. I'm sure it's not that hard. Uh, they're not designed to do that, but I would just rip them out and then you can uh, van life it. So also yeah. the U S will be getting a seven seat version and oh, Europe, cool. I think in the short wheelbase is five seat only. Um, it'll do vehicle to home vehicle to grid connection. It'll have mm -hmm. plug in charge like everything else. It's going to do lane changes. It's basically ID four stuff just iterated a little bit farther down as you would mm -hmm. expect because it's coming out years after yeah so and i, I just put in a link there jordan if you want to pull it up it's from 2017 and it looks it, it's like the same they're very Easily. close to the original uh um, yeah well yeah, that see? concept yeah yeah <laughs> yeah they had but that look how close there. they were to their their uh, numbers like if you scroll down you'll see they listed the kilowatt hours and battery size and stuff and mm -hmm. they said it was going to be for 2022 and they hit it there it is 
Uh, yep. Originally had 30 horsepower. Power power the concept sports 369 horsepower um, with dual electric motors. 111 kilowatt hour pack is what they were saying. Yep. And 80% uh, in 30 good. minutes. So here's the thing. They knew all of this because they already had MEB done by this point. Yeah, they did. And so it's just modular. And, you know, it's still got the play and pause buttons. <laughs> Obviously, we knew it wasn't going to ship, ship with that steering wheel. It has the <laughs> They ID didn't board. decide to use an iPad. Like a literal, <laughs> yeah, that's literally an iPad. iPad yeah, it's, not, it's an iPad holder. That was their whole idea at the time. Yeah. So now infotainment's part of it. Yeah, hey, but, they might go with that steering wheel now. I mean, the yoke is out there, so. Yeah. No, I hope not. They just, I love the, the white stock steering wheel. It's so great. Car is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's going to be a great car. Like you said, it's not about getting across the country fastest. And I would argue this type of vehicle isn't meant for that. If you're taking a family road trip and you're trying to see some sights, you're not trying to blast through them as fast as you can anyways. That's true. When you have kids, your stops are always way longer. And so if, you know, assuming the infrastructure keeps growing, like at what point will we start seeing chargers at rest stops, which is where a lot of families tend to stop, picnic, whatever. Um, I, I think this will be great. And I, I'm curious to see where the grid is at in 2024 when we get this in America. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited to see them on the roads. And I know the, you know, the Inside EVs podcast last week, people were speculating, you know, will the door block the charging port? And it won't. Uh, they conveniently they don't, don't show it. the door on the same side of the charging port, but the charging port is right in front of this seam right here. And the door, assuming it's wide open in this photo, does not cover that seam. So that's, you know, I'm, I'm assuming they had engineered for it, but now it's confirmation, at least based on these photos, based on the European spec. Again, we don't know exactly what American spec will look like, especially with the long wheelbase, but mm -hmm. I think it's going to be absolutely awesome. Can't wait to drive it. Can't wait to see them on the roads. Who knows? Maybe I'll want one. I probably will. <laughs> but if you're re even remotely interested in this, go watch Doug DeMiro's video. Uh, they invited yep. a few outlets, not us, unfortunately, to come take a look at this. And um, I thought Doug did a really good job of the full walk around. And he even confirmed that the long wheelbase is going to keep the exact same front and rear overhang. Uh, it's just going to elongate the middle. So it should That's look nice. the same, just longer. It's going to be awesome. Nice. That's cool. Ben, think about how many dogs you can fit in the back of it. Dog, the ultimate dog caller. We've already, trust me, we've already had these conversations. And we're like, you could put a bathtub here and the water tank and this thing. And like... Think about yeah. how good that would be as a mobile pet grooming studio because you got all that onboard power and everything. And then the only thing you could need, which wouldn't be hard to do, is just put a pop up so you could stand up in there. So yeah. like, there oh, will be oh. one. There, I guarantee yeah, either it will be factory or there will be a conversion. Yeah. So you'll get an extra, you know, tent up top so you can stand in the van and it's perfect for met, uh, pet grooming. I have recently seen maybe on TikTok this new like mobile pet treadmill thing where they oh, like it's a big thing. Yeah. Yeah. Dog, and they uh, and the dog run and they get so excited and they love it and they just run in a van and they have like the air <laughs> <mission> <laughs> run in a van. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I'm I'm excited for it. Also, the Mazda CX-60 debuts as a handsome, as they say, plug-in crossover. Now it it's looks a bit front awkward. End. Yeah, I think it looks they, awkward too. Mazda. So let me throw up a photo for visual listeners of the CX-50, which is just peak design from Mazda mm -hmm. in the last. I don't know. 10, like since the ND RF Miata, this has been the best looking Mazda. I mean, the C, uh, the Mazda 3 hatchback also looks fantastic. Yep. But the hatchback's very sexy and curvy. The CX50, they I took wouldn't a, go that far. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I don't, I wouldn't call it that. But I think this looks better, to be honest. The CX50, they went the, a bit more angular and rugged, still curves, still the Kodo design language, but the more rugged approach, the, pl the cladding does not even bother me which is shocking. It actually bothered me on the CX-30 a bit more. Um, but the CX-50 looks great. Now the, the CX-30 is ugly. The CX-30 <laughs> is... <It's or> the, <laughs> the CX-60, I'm trying to figure out why it looks awkward. And maybe it's It doesn't because, have black cladding. That's why. Yeah. No. So there's, there's too much <laughs> white between the top of the front <laughs> wheel arch and yeah. the, I guess the arch and the hood. There's just so it looks much. like a Chinese knockoff of the CX. <laughs> okay, so I was just about to explain why I think it looks weird. 
It looks like when you see a car that's vaguely familiar, but it's in some foreign market, you know, usually a developing market like China or, or not, or even like Japan, where they get more you know, diversity in vehicle design, where it's like, this is something familiar, but there's a lot of like proportional things that are kind of weird about it. And so it ends up looking like it was made by some Russian company or... No, you this know. is the this is the GTA version of the Mazda CX sixty. Yeah, 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 the yeah exactly. GTA. Yeah, they don't have the licensing, so they can't make it look quite right. But it's and it has close. a little like Maserati Levante ish yeah. to it, maybe as well. And Actually, it's got a lot yeah. of stuff. It's like and then it also Genesis, makes me think of a Mitsubishi. And I don't it's know why. Genesis, the Genesis GV seventy Levante CX fifty made or all described over the telephone and this is what came out <laughs> yes and then the grill makes me think of what is it a hunky yeah like it's, that, that, like, it's awkward spread, right? and the, and the title of this is handsome are you kidding me maybe Super there's better there. colors or angles like maybe it needs a sports or off-road I mean, package and then I, I, it, that, it, it looks okay. nothing's wrong it's just that nothing's right that is a bmw tail light it does yeah. and it has Volvo xc60 it, split tailpipes yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just it's everything. Not, I don't like the Genesis kind of dashboard. It's just weird. <laughs> this yeah. is not it good. Feels like, yeah, yeah. It feels like it's got, it's trying to like have more impressive proportions than it actually does. If that Wait, makes so sense. not only did they put E, they also put PHEV. So they yes. really want you to know. This is a PHEV, which they're saying is going to have, e. I think, a 100 kilowatt motor. With 17.8 mm -hmm. kilowatt hour battery, of course, they don't say usable or gross, um, which the total output will be 323 horsepower, which they say will be the most powerful car the company's ever made. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, 5.8 seconds sprint Eyebar. to 62 miles an hour. Uh, they say it's not, they say it's a sprint. So the 37 miles on pure electric power, which is impressive. Uh, we'll of course test that whenever we get our hands on this thing. And... If Mazda will ever loan us a car after my <laughs> MX30 review. Speaking of Kyle, <laughs> are you again. still drinking out of that MX30 water bottle? Oh, I had finished, but I was enjoying my MX30 water bottle because so, yeah. Mazda long... gave this to me, and I normally don't try not to take things, but I didn't actually realize it. It was just in a little thing, and it even has this little thing that goes in the bottom, which is a wireless phone charger that fits in the bottom <laughs> of the MX30. Now, if only they applied this level of clever engineering to the <laughs> MX30, they could have had a good product. Is that phone charger, like, does it plug, do you have to plug it into power, or is it, like, battery? Does so it you plug it into the computer. I just plugged it in for the first time. And I think if I put my phone here, it should charge it. Oh, wait, there is a power button. Boom. <laughs> um, and it's not charging. Oh, Kyle, well, you and I have the same background on our phone. How about that? That's a good background, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it I, is, I will yeah. say, similar to the MX-30, though, that wireless charger will charge your phone in a whopping, like, eight hours. So <laughs> <laughs> And overheat it because we all know wireless charging gets hot. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah that that's one thing. Really, that's one thing I have good. conflicting feelings about is wireless charging in cars. Um, it, there's just so few cars that really implement it properly. Um, but anyways, CX60 will get plug-in hybrid. It'll also get a inline mm -hmm. six and a Skyactiv diesel. And the inline six and the diesel will both get the 48 volt mild hybrid systems, which Mazda calls M Hybrid Boost. So I don't know. I'm curious to test it, partially because there's so many different configurations. I wish, I wish when we test, tested a car, they would give us like four cars, just one in every configuration, so we just knock them all out and compare them. Um, but you know, we'll just have to take what we get. But it's uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. Great interior. Mazda is really good at that. Even the CX or okay, MX30 has back a good up. interior. Where are you saying great interior? What do you mean? <laughs> this is Mazda interiors generally massive. feel nice. It has a massive center console, a massive dashboard, the tiniest little screen ever that's really wide. It's oh, like that's a, just like a Genesis. Genesis has thin it's but wide I don't like screens. It. <laughs> well, I actually it, think the most interesting thing is the inline six, but not yeah, turbocharged. Yeah, Mazda like went yeah. out of their way to it's make it slow. Though. <laughs> to make it slow. It's not about speed. That's all Mazda means to me is we go out of our way to make it slow. <laughs> and look, I am a Mazda fan. I've owned a Miata. I've owned your Miata, Mike. Jordan I owned remember. the Miata. I'm not against Mazda. I thought the Mazda 3 hatch turbo thing was one of the best cars I've ever driven. 
this whole modern Mazda thing, they have the opportunity in front of them to make amazing products that sell in big numbers that are desirable. And I'm sorry, but this is not a desirable product. Yeah. Meanwhile, they're still using a six speed automatic transmission from about 15 years ago. So at least it's uh, good and flips the downshifts. <laughs> That's true. They don't need. Yeah. The Miata, at least the Miata is slow car fast. Most of their stuff's just slow car slow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. They they could they if they put like a 550 horsepower plug-in hybrid awesome tire roasting thing and charge 70 grand for it, people would buy it. And they would yeah. go Mazda's back in big, you know, power and fashion and like <laughs> here we go. And the, it it's all laid out right here for them Mazda. I don't get it. Yep. Yep. It's it's true. Too um, much Japanese thinking here for the American market. I'm sorry, but it's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, quick lightning round before we finish up. I do want to mention, I saw the new Batman film this weekend was amazing. And it is my new favorite Batmobile has made its appearance in the Batman film. And they intentionally kept it generically seventies slash eighties kind of Mopar Mustang challenger Camaro charger, whatever they left it very generic, which is easy to do. I mean, if you describe those cars to a kid over the phone like kyle said this is what someone would draw <laughs> it's i think it looks fantastic of course pictures don't really do it justice in the move you have to like Ooh. go see it in imax and then feel the car then you actually really appreciate it but uh yeah appears to be a v10 rear mounted <laughs> um I, I don't know it's just it looks so badass and partially is the film's Pretty so cool. dark i mean DC films are usually dark, but this one was like <laughs> exceptionally dark as far as even the lighting. There was like no scenes in daylight. And so the, good like luck one, watching it on your TV. Yeah, the one scene in daylight was in like dark rain. So <laughs> <laughs> basically until these photos, I never knew exactly what the car looked like because it was just in shadows and darkness and then like screaming V10 to like ramps off a semi truck and explodes over. See, that <laughs> so, looks way cooler to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the I one Kyle thinks is cooler should be kind of insane, you know. I mean, I, I like it. I actually don't hate the way this new one looks. I haven't seen the movie, but mm. that to me, I mean, a Batmobile should just be something like crazy. Yeah. So I mean, the one Kyle likes is from the 2008 Dark Knight trilogy. Yes. Um, I'd never which... seen any of the movies, by the way, so I shouldn't really comment. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, the the Dark Knight trilogy is like one of the best trilogies ever made. But I only thought there was one, so it shows you how much I know. Uh, yeah, you <laughs> see that. I didn't know there were more than one. But it's okay because, like, the even if you don't know the movies, the Batmobile is really mostly about looks because I yeah, mean, these I are can't. not actual vehicles. They. I mean, do you want to tell me that that handles well? The answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's give it to Kyle. Kyle, do a canyon blast. Well, that last your evaluation. one that looks a lot like a tank. It's actually shockingly fuel efficient. It's a plug-in hybrid, didn't you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this, maybe this one's a mild hybrid. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> Toyota Mirai. I actually thought it was like an you. Alpha electric car from like that Alpha company. That's oh, those, yeah. Those that's trucks. right. Like I could see them making something yeah. like this. That's what I, if I bought that Alpha, I would make it look like a Batmobile. Um and then the last, the last thing I want to touch on is just this Polestar O2 concept, which oh. we haven't talked about yet, but I <laughs> yeah, lost my hard. mind because, I mean, until then... The... They're never going to make it, but it looks great. You don't think yeah, they'll so, make it? I think they no, will. I don't think so. I, I, I'm, I want them to make it. Um, <laughs> there will be no course, drone if they do. Of course, yeah. So it's annoying because every electric car that really grabs me is a concept that pretty much won't come out. So the previous one before this was the Tesla Roadster. Yeah, but and... they made the Polestar one, which was crazy. They did. That's true. The the, re the the fact that they made the Polestar one tells me or gives me hope that they will make this. It or will still it was be... such a disaster that they will never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they yeah. learned their lesson. I mean, they only um, made 1,500 of them. They had a yeah. whole dedicated factory for that thing and I made know. 1,500 cars. Hopefully so, they I mean, make I guess you well, they knew they were going to make fifteen hundred of them. I think. I just think From the they. Beginning, I thought they were limited. So that what probably happened was that was intended to be the Volvo sports coupe, and then they're like, "Oh, we have to launch this new company." Yeah, this electric company. And they company, yanked yeah. it from them. Yeah. But Which anyway, fine. I mean, I think it looks fantastic. I mean, it's basically a Polestar two underneath, pretty much. Well, it's but, a precept, isn't it? 
Oh, the precept, yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, it, it would be amazing. Precept. Because it doesn't have that ugly thing on the roof. The ugly LIDAR, <laughs> the whatever ugly roof. Thing. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. This has yeah, like a LIDAR. Supra roof. And I then love like it with the top up. Swede speed yeah, everywhere so else. I mean, as a coupe, I would own it. I mean, I'm not. You know what? The, the way the but... windows in the butcher shape is on that, you know what it reminds me a lot of? A speedboat. When those windows yeah. are up, where you get like, especially like a, a surf, like wake surf style boat, where you've got that windshield that wraps around, and then you kind of the sh- triangular, you know, so triangular you themselves down to a point. Back boot lid. Yep. Yeah, I would do that. that's like I would a do phantom. That. I would do the teak lid, and I would get the license plate yacht, and everyone would just hate me. <laughs> yeah, I don't <laughs> no, this, I don't I get that color. Looking that. right there, that image right there is stunning cool. to look at. Yeah. So the How do they make know, it. I want the them new, to make us wrong. The new Tesla Roadster. The new Tesla Roadster to me is peak car as far as on paper, which of course right now all it is. Well, is that's paper. all it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, why would you bring that into this conversation? Yeah. But I mean, that's the that's the last car that excited me this much, and now this is more uh-huh. exciting because I do think the chance of this existing is maybe higher than the Tesla Roadster, um, mm-hmm. and I'm glad that they're not saying like, oh, we're going to put rockets in this. Uh, I mean, they're gonna. They said they're gonna put a drone in this, which I think is kind of dumb. Uh, yes. And that comes from <laughs> my me boss being, is like, all about the drone in it. Yeah, but any drone can do that today. Yeah, like why? Like, don't give me a drone. Give me like a five hundred dollar credit to go buy my own drone. Like, <laughs> uh, unless that? the drone is frame. Amazing. That's cool. Yeah, um, I mean, it's got a lot of cool like little Easter eggs and like I think some carbon fiber amazing. work. I, uh, I think this is a really cool idea and they could have just stopped at the car, but they probably felt like they needed to do something to grab headlines. So they were like, oh, and it can launch a drone and look for traffic and take photos of your car or whatever. That was a marketing uh, team decision. That was a marketing team decision, it feels like. And I honestly feel like it's worse off for having that gimmick because it takes away from the fact that look at it. That's it all you is, need to know. Look, you guys know I hate concept cars. This one I'm not mad about. <laughs> I love the wheels, actually. Yeah, it's ID three wheels. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. Some, very similar. Some people yeah. hate the wheels. I do actually like them. You're right. I, like them. I love them. I, I love everything design. about this. The more Every. I'm looking at the wheel now, though, the less I'm liking it. But I liked it before. <laughs> I think it needs more of a denim, a little darker of a blue. Yeah. No, I love the light blue. No, denim done. blue. Denim. That yeah. interior is fine, though. Yep. I. Oh uh, yeah, I'm. Huge fan. Looking so. at this old man trying to figure out how to plug in his XT40. <laughs> yeah, the, the ads that keep popping the up. The ad just makes people look confused as to how electric cars work. It's not, not, a, good, it's like, not a good Is the kid old. showing him how to do it or is he showing Grandpa, the kid? you plug it in this way. <laughs> Who has the plug? Can you see? I can't tell who's holding the plug right now. All right. F- future that is a terrible future podcast segment is going to be us looking at ads for electric cars and Oh, um, did you guys see what happened this week? The it's a big news program. I think it was the Today Show or something like yes, that. Yes, I knew you were going to say. <laughs> uh, was gave gave a, a wonderful program on how to save tips on fuel while driving around because I guess fuel prices are getting expensive because Putin's crazy. So basically, uh, you they were like shut off your engine at stoplights, and they're like you can drive moderately. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're filming this entire thing in a Mustang Mach-E fully electric car. <laughs> it was <laughs> so freaking good. <laughs> My guess is that was the presenter's car, and you know she may no not have had any idea though. We don't know. I bet yeah, you that's their car. Say, and they knew. I don't think that was her car. <laughs> really? that was so I think they awesome. threw the, her I think in what a they, car. They showed was like, like a producer. Turn car. off your car. It doesn't really matter what you get a close up of. Put air in your tires. Again, that's pretty universal. But I it's don't know. not true spirit of reporting. Yeah. I think they picked what was available. It's a local news station. It's never good. I know it's not. This was like national news. Wasn't this like a, a big program, Mike? Yeah, it was like. NBC or some CNBC. It was like, like NBC was San national. Diego or whatever. Oh, it was one of those. I thought it was. Like I thought one it was some, some one of the affiliates. I mean, they're all national. I don't know, extent. but I, think, I thought it was a I local member station. I, it was so good. It was like, amazing. I was yeah. like, oh, well, you're really showing the benefits of a gas car, right? Right. <laughs> Basically, what she should have said: you want to save gas, don't drive, drive a gas one of these. car. Yeah. yeah, but then it's like they're crazy expensive. Good luck finding an in-stock electric vehicle right now. Like you oh, can't anywhere, just yeah. go out and buy one. 
Mm -hmm. Polestar does yeah. have several incoming cars you can reserve, though, at your local space. I look daily. There's plenty of cars on the ground. You just gotta you just gotta search around for them. A lot of people, I think, are pretty dumb when it comes to buying cars, though, and not dumb in the way where they don't understand the process. They just think they need to go to their local dealership to buy a car. Yeah, this well, is 2021. Wait, it's 2022. You buy. You yeah, there's buy something stuff. called CarMax. You can go anywhere in the world, and they have electric cars in stock. I mean, anywhere in the country. Expand your just search about. radius beyond 20 mm -hmm. miles. You'll you'll be amazed. So. Anyways, that's our show today. Thanks for joining us. Um, check out all of our stuff on YouTube. We're doing pretty much daily uploads at Out of Spec, and Twitter is at Out of Spec. My Twitter is at Jordan underscore Schieffer. We've got Mike at M underscore Breeling, Ben at Benji underscore OS, and Kyle, the one, only one without underscores, at It's Kyle Connor. That's the only so, reason I have that Twitter handle because I don't <laughs> like underscore. It's very <laughs> annoying to say underscore. I, I will agree with that. So thank you all for watching. We'll see you all on the next one. Bye-bye.